Hey YouTube, Andy here. Thanks for tuning in. This is just going to be a short video taking a look at the Lenovo A275 uh, to see if this is a laptop that you might want to consider purchasing for yourself or for your business. So let's talk about it. Uh, so what is this device? This is a Lenovo ThinkPad with a 12.5 inch screen. So this is a pretty small ultrabook size device, very portable. And what makes this device different than most of the other devices in the ThinkPad lineup is what makes it an A275, which is the AMD processor. If we pop this open, you can see it has the fancy, fancy AMD Pro sticker on it, uh, which is pretty cool stuff because I am quite the AMD fan myself. I have an AMD Ryzen system that I'm editing this video on with an RX 580, so I love any chance to support Team Red. So I was really excited to take a look at this laptop. Uh, because the reason I have this is that the company I work for is actually asking me to evaluate these for thinking about using these for a lot of our employers. And specifically, uh, I might be using one of these myself if I decide it's a good laptop to go with. So let's find out. Uh, the outside of the laptop is, I think, a pretty obvious place to start. If we close it, I do, you know, there's a lot to like in terms of the build quality. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. Uh, just closing it, just, we'll, we'll listen to that. I'll put it by the mic and... It just has a really nice sound. It closes uh, very gently. You feel the, the air just getting pushed out evenly. It's like opening an Apple product almost is what closing this laptop is like. Um, and the design of the laptop itself, it's a little bit chunky uh, for a 12.5 inch screen laptop. Most of those are going for super thin these days. But we're also looking at the X1 Carbon and when you put this right next to that, like on a table, on the internet, you look on the Lenovo website, and this thing looks enormous compared to that. But you put them right next to each other, and it's not that much of a difference. So this really reminds me a lot of the old like uh, plastic MacBooks in terms of the design, because it's the same thickness all the way through. It's a little thinner than those, definitely more portable. Um, I really like the outside design of this. Uh, and one thing that's very easy to love about the outside design is the sheer selection of ports because I'm an IT guy in the communications industry. So I love that guy right there, that ethernet port. That ethernet port makes me happy. That's my happy place. Uh, so ethernet is a great option on this. If you need ports, if you need ethernet, uh, or just really, really want it because you're not a fan of the dongle life, but you also want an ultra portable machine, this is very appealing. Um, the other side, we've got full size HDMI. Each side has a full size USB port. This side also has USB-C. Um, and then you've got your Lenovo charging port. So pretty nice stuff. And you don't have to sacrifice any of those ports for charging because Lenovo has their own. Though who knows, it would be cool if they added a second USB-C for charging. So the outside of the device, very nice. If we open it up, we can take a look at the inside. You know, classic Lenovo. We've got the matte screen. We have the very nice Lenovo keyboard. Uh, so this is the first time I've actually spent much time with a ThinkPad. And this keyboard is great. Uh, it's velvety. It's su such a pleasure to type on. It makes me want to take better notes. That's how good this keyboard is. Uh, we have a trackpad here, which unfortunately is not the greatest. I've noticed uh, when it works, it works fine. It's a Windows Precision trackpad. But I've noticed every once in a while that it just like stops working for a few seconds and, and nothing happens. So I've tried looking for updated drivers since it's window, Windows Precision. Those should all be handled through uh, Windows updates, but there is a Synaptics driver on here. I updated that to the February update, which is the latest on the Lenovo website, and the issue is still happening. So I don't know if that's something else, but that is something to be aware of. Also inside, uh, there's a webcam, which I tried it out for five seconds. It did okay. It uh, didn't look the greatest, but it actually seemed to prevent a or present a pretty balanced picture. So actually not too bad pretty usable the last thing that's interesting here is that we do have a fingerprint reader uh, if I can figure out where we are on the webcam uh, you can tell I don't make a ton of videos on the webcam there's the fingerprint reader let's actually turn it on the fingerprint reader I found it's reasonably reliable like it'll get me in I haven't had to go to a backup option yet uh, but unfortunately it's not always the fastest so we're just gonna show a little fingerprint reader test and it doesn't always work quite on the first try, so I only have one fingerprint set up. Okay, so that time it did work, and it worked pretty quick. So that was a pretty good example of it. 
I would say, you know, half the time that's what happens. Sometimes you're going to have a little more trouble getting in. But it's a really great feature to have, and you have a backup pin just in case that doesn't work. So I really like the inclusion of a fingerprint reader on a device in this price range. So the outside of the device, I'm just going to put it like this. I really like it. This is, like I said, the first ThinkPad I've spent much time with. The build quality just feels amazing. Um, I'm coming from an XPS 13, which I've used a lot of. And that device, unfortunately, feels a little bit rickety at times. Like, it's not put together the greatest. This feels a lot more solid than that. So I have a lot of confidence in the build quality of this device, just based on how it feels right now. So there is a lot more to a device, though, than just the outside and the build quality. There's the performance. So there are really two areas of this worth talking about. Uh, one... What I'm going to start with, and unfortunately, really, I think the worst news on this device is the battery life. Um, the first night I got it, it's really a tale of two battery lives, which is never a good sign, in my opinion, on a laptop. You don't want huge swings in battery life. Uh, the first night I got it, and for a little bit the next day when I did some pretty hard stuff on it just to push it a little, the battery life was pretty terrible. Uh, about three hours from fully charged to when it got under 15%. Um, I consider that more or less dead. I almost never push a laptop all the way to zero, but like three hours, you know, to get you from 100% to 15%, which is not good because that last 15% isn't going to last any longer than the first 15% did. Um, but that was like updating OneDrive and downloading and installing quite a few apps like Adobe apps, Office, um, some other stuff like that. So there was a lot going on in the background. Also, Windows updates were going on. So I figured, you know, that's really heavy usage. You know, it's fair that the battery life might get better. Uh, I also installed some BIOS updates, a whole bunch of driver updates uh, after that. So I was hoping that things would improve. And they did improve a little bit. But unfortunately, I'm still only getting around four and a half to five hours on the battery. So I'll go ahead and give you an idea of what my workflow is because I do have quite a bit sort of pulling, checking the cloud in the background. I always have Outlook open, Microsoft Teams, uh, OneNote. OneDrive is open, but I, I'm not constantly syncing stuff up and down in the back. Not always a bunch of stuff changing. And then there's always a web browser open, and there, there's some stuff going on there. So occasionally there will be more stuff, but honestly, that's really all I've been using on this. So if anything, it's actually been a little bit lighter than the normal usage I get on my XPS where I have a few extra just, you know, random apps that I've installed over the last year and a half that run in the background and just use stuff. So battery life, pretty big disappointment so far. Um, though if we do look at the battery, this laptop is interesting because it does use a dual battery system. We can see there's a removable battery here. Uh, there's a built-in one that's 23 watt hours. This removable standard one is also 23 watt hours, giving you a total of 46. Uh, you can also get, instead of this external or removable 23 watt hour, you can get a removable 46, which would give you a total of like 73 or 72, right around that area. So that would improve things quite a bit, I think, in terms of battery life uh, and get you up to, I think, comfortably around seven hours if you did that. It does stick out, though. It makes this thing prop up. So it's not necessarily a great look, and it does ruin the really, really clean lines, uh, and a lot of what I think is kind of understated and utilitarian elegance about this chassis. Uh, so unfortunately, the battery life is a pretty big problem, but since it does have that dual battery system, you can also just swap the batteries out if that's something that you don't mind doing. So the other half of the performance coin is just how the laptop actually performs when you're not worried about the battery and you're actually just diving in and using it. So I'll say the performance is not as good as I was expecting. Uh, looking at the really simple benchmarks, I just like pass mark, I was expecting this processor to perform very similar, similarly to the 6200U uh, i5 that I have in my XPS 13, the 6th gen i5 uh, U series. I was expecting it to be very close because the scores are very similar. And... For the most part, the performance is pretty similar. It, it keeps up fine in Outlook. Uh, the one exception is that I seem to have a lot of performance problems with Microsoft Teams occasionally coming up and spiking performance. And it does seem like, I don't know if it's just always Teams or just like other apps even doing it, that the CPU usage just seems to get spiked a lot more often 
than I have on other devices on the Ryzen system or on that i5 in the XPS. So just like random CPU spikes, which I suspect is also responsible for the poor battery performance. So I think the CPU is just having to really jack itself up and clock itself up to keep up really more often than I would expect a, a new laptop to do. So the performance not the greatest. Uh, the other aspect of performance I did take a quick look at was 3D performance, uh, or at least in the form of gaming. Since this is an APU, I did want to take a look. Uh, I had one back in the day, an old A6, when I was on an extreme budget, and do have some fond memories of playing some games on that uh, for quite an underpowered system. So I wanted to see how this would hold up, and unfortunately the results were a little bit disappointed. I was hoping that the APUs had improved quite a bit since then. Uh, I installed Rocket League on this one, and as you can see from the results, they're not that great. Uh, it did get a little bit better if you play it all the way at the very lowest resolution, uh, 640 by 480 but that's really unplayable uh, on any sort of a modern machine. So this footage is at 720p, the very lowest settings at 720p, and it is not pretty. So I would say it's barely playable. This is, I'm guessing, 15 to 20 FPS. Uh, barely playable. So if you went like even older and like less demanding than Rocket League, then you might be able to game on this. Uh, but you know you're probably not going to game on you know a ThinkPad anyway. But this isn't, in my opinion, a good sign for 3D performance all around. It's just you know a little bit disappointing. And I honestly would expect more out of a comparable Intel solution. So as the AMD fanboy in me is just crying in this video uh, on the performance because the CPU performance has been a little bit of a letdown. The graphics has been a little bit of a letdown. Uh, I have read that that might be due to Lenovo using single channel RAM in this instead of dual channel. Um, and actually, just to put it out there, I am using the system that has the 256 gig NVMe SSD, so that should be good, and eight gigs of RAM. So yeah, it should have been fine, I think, but a little bit disappointing for Rocket League uh, and, and maybe disappointing all around for 3D performance and general performance. So that really leaves us at the end of the day with the question of whether this is a computer that you should think about buying, the ThinkPad A275. And I think probably not for, for almost all of you. It's, it's not going to be the right decision for the simple reason that the battery life isn't good enough, uh, right? So I could get over the fact that the performance isn't the greatest, that there are a few stutters, because they really are relatively few, and for most things it kept up fine. And I almost, I'm honestly wondering if, you know, it might just be a few random apps that it's not tuned that well for. And like I said, I seem to have a lot of problem with Microsoft Teams, which is pretty new. And there are lots of reports of that causing CPU issues. So that's something that might actually get fixed. So the performance I'm actually not too worried about in terms of its usability. I am really concerned about the battery life. Um, because I don't think that's all to blame on, on just like Teams occasionally spiking performance. The battery life is pretty bad and seemed really unreliable like you might be able to squeeze great battery life out of this if you're willing to like totally focus on that and, and let that disrupt your workflow so the battery life's a problem there are options to extend that um so i'll say you know don't buy this laptop unless the one situation where this might make sense is if you want a really rugged small thinkpad uh and one, you either don't need that much battery life, so like four hours a day is all you need on battery, and there are definitely workers for who that's the case, um, or also if you don't mind swapping the batteries out and having like maybe a big fat battery on the back for when you need all day performance, and that would be an option. So that's the only case, um, and even then you're walking a fine line because there's the X270, which is basically the exact same chassis as this, but with an Intel processor, and from everything I've read, because that unit has been reviewed a lot, the battery life on it is legit. It's as good as the XPS 13. It's like, you know, you're talking 8, 9, 10 hours of battery life legit on the one that looks like this. So it, it's hard to make the case, you know, unless you really are pinching pennies and, you know, having to carry around extra batteries on the A275 is worth it. Uh, so, like I said, I really want, wanted to like the Lenovo ThinkPad A275. Uh, it has this really cool, it has this great AMD Pro sticker. I'm fumbling it now. It has this great AMD Pro sticker. Um, I'm an AMD fan. I wanted to like it, but unfortunately, 
I can't recommend this. Uh, so I would look at the X270, the Intel version, if you want something in this form factor. Uh, otherwise, maybe just look elsewhere, because I have a feeling that unless you really want that ThinkPad build quality, uh, that you can probably do more for your money in this price range. Anyway, I'm going to have this unit probably for a few more weeks at least. So if you have any questions, uh, post a comment below, and I'll take a look and try to get back to you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, hope this helped, and have a great rest of your day.